Now there's usability and user testing. I know I've mentioned this several times that we, they, we do have quite a number of techniques that are out there that are used pretty consistently that we know work. So these are techniques used to measure characteristics of the user's interaction. So you've gone through some of them in this class, but if you do a search and you go to some of the user experience sites, there's a ton of them and many variations of them. So usually the focus is on usability. This is what we are primarily going to be focusing on in terms of our group project. And it usually focuses on measuring how well users can complete specific standardized tasks as well as what problems they may occur. This is also one of the things that we are doing in our group project. We are going to have specific tasks. And it requires a fairly complete and coherent design artifact to test against. So this usually occurs after you at least have a prototype. Right, so it tends to be more appropriate later in the design cycle. That's also one reason why for the group project, I'm having you go look for something that's already existing. You would do this on something where you have something that exists. Now, as I mentioned last class, when we're doing usability testing, we're doing a lot of this research, we will get both quantitative and qualitative data. So you are going to be collecting some quantitative data, right, age, maybe, you know, what is their highest level of education, what gender are they, you're going to have hard numbers on those. Most of what you're going to be looking at is qualitative data, right, you're going to get rich detail, who was able to finish this. Now sometimes students will even measure how long it takes someone to complete a task. Is that qualitative or quantitative? Quantitative. It's a great exam question, too. Now, when you do usability testing, that's particularly helpful when you are trying to get details about information you can't necessarily get from quantitative data, such as what type of name does a button or a link or a section, which one makes most sense? For that, you would do usability testing. And how do you organize information? There's something else called information architecture out in industry where this is specifically what they look at. <coughs> what is the best way to organize information on a website? What categories should you use? What should you name that category? Those sorts of things. It can be very, very helpful with that. Oh, one more. Okay, and then it also helps with first time use and discoverability. So if you are building something, you're going to have new users. You're building a website, you're going to have new users in your website. Are the things that they expect to find easily found? Are they where they expect to find them? How do they look for these things? Usability testing is excellent for that. And effectiveness. How can customers efficiently and effectively complete particular tasks? What missteps are they making? How many times are they making them? Where are they making them? And how important are those missteps? Now, years and years ago, there was a website. I wish I could remember the name at this time, but it was a cutting-edge website where, this was probably, what, 10, 10 years ago at least. Cutting-edge website where they were selling clothes. And you can get a model. You could choose the model that kind of sort of looked like you, and you put the clothes, try the clothes on it so you can try you know, this shirt with these pants, and it was a technological wonder, right? It was a startup that people were just talking about like crazy, and it bombed. The company closed. The reason that they closed was two reasons. One, their business model wasn't so great, but two, they had this great technological wonder they tested it on desktops, but apparently they didn't test it across the internet with real users. So you would be sitting there, oh, this is so cool, move the shirt over. Click, 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 move the shirt over. 
crashes. <laughs> All right, they found that users just stopped using the site. Because even though they were able to put some intuitive stuff in there, there were other things they didn't look at. Like how long users were willing to wait. Because they, they did put a little message up saying it can be a little slow at times. But they didn't test out how long were users willing to wait. So they had a lot of problems. So that's where you want to worry about things like effectiveness and efficiency and making sure that you test them. Now, in testing them, they would have wanted to use something we're going to use for a group project called task analysis. This includes techniques that involve using either questionnaires or open-ended interviews to develop a detailed understanding of how people perform specific tasks. So we are going to have our users in our group project perform specific tasks that we are going to be developing. We want to see, can they accomplish these tasks? But there's something you need to remember when we talked about tasks versus goals. When you are dealing with tasks versus goals, even though we're looking at tasks, when we create those tasks, we need to focus on what are the goals to determine what those tasks should be. Because what are tasks? What is the relationship between tasks and goals? Right, so tasks are the actions that you get to the end result, which are the goals. You can just create a bunch of tasks, and it's not going to mean anything. If you want it to mean something, you need to look at the goals. So it provides us with a really good way of understanding how users currently do something, right? But it doesn't necessarily focus on user goals. We still have to do that in developing the tasks. You see the connection and the difference? Is that a yes or a no? Did I hear a no? Someone, I heard a no. All right, so in other words, when you are developing your task, I want you to look at your product that you've selected, and I want you to think about, all right, if I'm a user, I'm going to put myself in, in the shoes of a user, and I'm going to sit here. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm going to this website. Why am I going to this website? I'm a user. What would cause a user to go there? Okay, let's say it's Amazon. Not a good, not a good site for your group project, which is why I'm going to use it. All right, so I'm going to go to Amazon. Why on earth would I go to Amazon? I just want to buy something. I may want to buy something. Or I may want to compare prices. Anything else? Oh, I may want to rent a movie. I want to read the reviews about a product. Or I want to read the reviews about a product. What? Oh, I may want to sell something. Maybe I have an account, one of the seller's accounts. Sorry? You can trade as well? Yeah, I don't know. I've, that I haven't looked at. But maybe if, you, you, if they have a trading capability, maybe it's because you are someone who likes trading things. So you need to look at the user's goal and from there break it down into tasks. All right, if I want to compare prices or if I want to compare reviews, what am I going to do? What tasks am I going to engage in so that I can reach that goal? Does it make more sense? All right, because that's the approach I want you to take when it comes to coming up with your task. Figure out what the goal is, then break it down into tasks.